Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the next session of the fluid mechanics. In today's session, we will start the next chapter that is fluid statics. And in this, the focus will be on Pascal's law and regarding the objectives of this chapter. The first objective will be to understand the concept of surface forces and body forces. Second, we will develop an understanding about Pascal's law. We will also determine the pressure variation in vertical direction for a fluid at rest. That is your hydrostatic law. And in the next videos, we will try to understand and we will study the different kinds of manometers. We will also derive an expression for force exerted by a fluid on the submerged surface. We will also have an understanding about the buoyancy and stability. Further, we will develop an understanding about the stability of immersed and floating bodies. In the last part of this chapter, we will discuss some numerical problems on manometers, submerged plane surfaces and stability of bodies. So in this video, I'll cover these three objectives. So first of all, introduction regarding the fluid statics. As the word indicates statics, which means rest. So we will take into consideration the cases of the fluids wherein there will be no motion. So if there will be no motion, there will be no shear force between the fluid layers. So how that shear, that shear force will be absent that we will discuss in this slide and in the coming slide. So due to which the force in this case will be only due to the normal component of the force that and that force is called as the pressure force. As if we will recall uh, the previous videos, we will, uh, we will know that the forces are in the parallel direction and the force is x in the normal direction. So the normal direction force is certainly called as the pressure component and the force which acts in the parallel direction to the fluid motion is called as the shear force or the force due to the tangential component. So in this case, shear force will be absent and there will be only normal component of the force and it is called as the pressure force. So before we move ahead, the concept of body forces and surface forces is an important part part of this uh, fluid statics. So if we take into consideration a fluid element or a very small fluid element, element it is generally acted upon by two types of forces called as the body forces and the surface forces. So basically the body forces acts on the mass of the fluid element and these forces are independent of the fluid mechanics concept and these forces are basically caused by some external effects. So that, that external effect can be your gravity since gravity acts on the mass of the system and due to which gravitational force comes into existence. So the gravitational force can be regarded and can be called as a body force. Similarly, we can have the magnetic force or some electrostatic force which, uh, which is certainly acts on the mass of the fluid element. So generally we will, we, we will be discussing the gravitational force in, in fluid mechanics, not these magnetic forces and other forces. So we will be only discussing the gravitational force as the main body force in case of the fluid mechanics and particularly in fluid statics. The next force is your surface force and these forces basically acts on the area of the fluid elements and that's why these forces are called as the surface forces and these forces are generally due to the surrounding fluid elements due to the effect of the surrounding fluid elements which are in direct contact with the fluid element under consideration. So let us uh, see a case wherein we have a surface of area A and 
the forces which will act on uh, this area in the direction of the motion of the fluid will be called as a shear force or parallel to this area will be called as a shear force uh, we are aware of this figure and the force which will basically be normal to the surface will be called as a normal force so the perpendicular to the surface element one force and another is parallel to the surface of the fluid element that is another force so basically uh, you are aware of this that this normal force which is in the perpendicular direction is a cause of normal stress and generally we call in this fluid element uh, fluid statics we generally call this force as a pressure force and the force which generally takes place parallel to the area of this uh, which generally acts parallel to the area of this uh, surface is called as a shear force and it, it generally causes shear stress so how that shear force will be equals to zero see in case of fluid mechanics the, uh, fluid statics rather there will be no relative motion between the layers so if there will be no relative motion between the layers and simply which means the velocity gradient or the change in the velocity with respect to your uh, normal distance will be equals to zero so if you put that uh, uh, the value of velocity gradient in your newton's law of viscosity certainly the tau will be equals to zero and tau is your shear uh, stress and that shear stress will certainly will, will be equals to zero and if we convert that shear stress into shear force it certainly means that the shear force will also be zero so in case of a fluid statics generally where we call that the fluid is at rest uh, the body forces x uh, the, which acts on the mass of the system there is a surface force which acts on the surface surface of the system which is comprises of your normal force and shear force so in case the a case of the fluid uh, fluid statics there will be a body force and there will be a normal force which will act on the fluid at rest but there will be no shear force so in case of a fluid statics we will not be taking into consideration the shear force as there is no relative motion between the layers of the fluid element so we will be only considering body force and the surface force due to the normal component so next is your pascal's law so this is a figure we have wherein, a for, wherein uh, the force is acting on a wedge shaped element we have considered this wedge shaped element which will have a thickness of uh, unity unit which will have a unit thickness in y direction so we will be only considering uh, considering the x and z direction in this case so let us consider that delta x delta y and delta z with the length of the elements in x y and z directions respectively and let us also consider that the forces which are acting in x y x and z direction are as px and force in y direction is uh, is will certainly will not be here and we will be considering the force in z direction as pz and there is another force which is acting on this inclined plane uh, that is pn so after resolving this uh, this force into two components and that force will be pn cos phi and pn sin phi and P basically denotes the pressure force in the normal direction for this particular elemental area. So, if we take into consideration the submission of forces in x direction, what we will get, we will get that this component of the force will be balanced by the this component of force that is your Pn sin of phi. So, the force which is acting on this area multiplied by this area. So, Px pressure in x direction multiplied by delta z multiplied by delta y which is certainly 1 in this case so which will be uh, equals to pn into l l is the length of this side multiplied by l uh, multiplied by sine of phi and it will be multiplied by 1 again which is your delta y which is equals to 1 in this case so what we will get over here after dividing it by delta z on both the sides we will get uh, this value and delta z certainly is equal to l sine of phi if you will calculate from this figure so delta z is equal to l sine of phi 
So uh, after this, we will get as Px, that is a force in extraction is equals to, uh, sorry, the pressure acting in the extraction is equals to pressure acting in this direction. So we will take into consideration in the next case, summation of forces in z direction. Similarly, we have the force in the z direction. So Pz component will be there and the component in the vertical direction will be Pn cos phi. The pressure will be due to this component and certainly the weight of the fluid element will also be taken into consideration in the z direction because in fluid statics we also take into the, into, into the consideration the forces which are acting on the mass of the system that is the body force because this pressure force forces are the forces uh, which acts on the surface due to the normal component of the force but the weight is the body force which will be acting on this fluid element and certainly in the x direction we will not consider that weight it will be considered only in the vertical direction so the equation will be likewise this pz into delta x multiplied by 1 that is your delta y which is equal to 1 minus of pn l cos phi multiplied by 1 minus mg that is your weight of the fluid element which will be equal to 0 so after solving this equation what we will get we will get these values and certainly mass will be equals to mass is equals to volume into density so volume of this fluid element and that will be given by this formula mass is equals to volume into density and multiplied by acceleration due to gravity so what we will get we will get this kind of so dividing both sides by delta x to the previous equation what we will get we get pz is equals to pn l cos of phi by delta x and certainly it will be 1 by 2 delta x by delta x l sin phi rho into g which can be further simplified in this form so if we assume that this delta c approaches to 0 because it's very small uh, length and if will it will approach to 0 so what will happen the wedge will shrink to a point which wedge the which wedge we will be we will considering in the previous case that is this wedge will certainly shrink into a point so in that case your pz will be equals to p n pz will be equals to p n that is a force in the z direction z direction is equals to pressure force i'm talking about is equals to the pressure force in the normal direction in this particular direction so from the above two equations the equation previous equation which we uh, uh, derived that was in in that case px was equals to pn and in this case pz is equals to pn so from those two equations we can say that px is equals to pz minus is equals to p and that is the pressure in x direction is equals to the pressure in z direction is equals to the pressure in the normal direction so if we repeat this analysis by considering a case wherein the delta x will be equals to 1 okay in that case if the delta x will be equals to 1 we will repeat this whole case what we will get we will get another equation that in that case p y will be equals to p z equals to p n so as a whole from these two equations we can write p x is equals to p y equals to p z is equals to p n or simply we can call it as p it can be in any direction so thus the pressure from all the directions at a point why i'm taking into consideration a point we have assumed that this delta z will approach to zero and certainly the pressure from all the directions at a point is equal in magnitude from any direction in that case so this was basically first of all observed by pascal that's why it is called as the Pascal's law. So it is the statement of the Pascal's law in which which states that the pressure acting at a point from all the directions is equal in magnitude. So second case will be the case of hydrostatics law that we will be discussing in this uh, video. So uh, again we will consider a fluid element it's a rectangular fluid element in this case and in this case also we have considered that its thickness in z direction is equals to 1 it has a unit thickness in that direction so delta x delta y be the length or and width of the fluid element in x and y 
directions so p1 p2 and p3 are the uh, normal uh, forces are the pressure components which are acting normal to that particular surface and w is of uh, weight which is acting in the downward direction so here also we will try to uh, solve the equation for the forces in x direction equals to zero so certainly p1 multiplied by this area it is p1 multiplied by delta y multiplied by 1 because delta z is equals to 1 so it will be equals to p3 into delta y into 1 so simply p1 will be equals to p3 in that case which certainly means that if we take into consideration the change in pressure in in the horizontal plane it certainly states that the pressure in in the horizontal plane will remain at each and every point so there is no change in the pressure in the horizontal direction for a fluid at rest so now if we take into consideration the case wherein the summation of forces in y direction is equals to zero so what we will get we will get this kind of equation because weight will also come into picture now because weight as is a body force over here so p2 into delta x multiplied by delta z that is one in this case plus w is equals to p4 delta x into one so upon uh, simplifying what we will get p2 minus p4 multiplied by delta x is equals to your mg w is equals to mg and m is your mass and that mass can again be converted into volume into density so delta x delta y multiplied by delta z which is equals to 1 is the volume rho is your density and g is your acceleration due to gravity so upon simplification change in pressure will be certainly equals to negative of delta y multiplied by rho g so from here we can say that the change in pressure is dependent upon the the delta y rho and g so the delta y basically is the or you can say is the uh, depth of the fluid element in that particular case so the change in pressure between two points in the vertical direction is proportional to the distance as uh, from the as can be concluded from the previous equation if we are taking into consideration that, that the fluid has a constant density from that we can also say that the pressure increases with the increase in the height so let us now take into consideration the two points wherein uh, we want to find out the change in pressure so from the previous equation p1 minus p2 can be written as minus y rho into g so p1 certainly means that the pressure at this point and from if, if from this particular case we can say that the pressure which is acting on this surface is your is your atmospheric pressure so we can say it is p atmospheric so p1 is equals to p atmospheric minus p2 which is equals to minus y rho into z g so that p2 can be given by uh, p atmospheric plus this pressure so the pressure at this point at this level will certainly be more than the atmospheric pressure by this value by this amount okay so we can also write it as uh, p2 minus p atmospheric we can also because the, it is a difference in pressure and that pressure can also be written as gauge pressure so gauge pressure is equals to in this case is equals to rho g into y so in most of the cases what we have we have the density as a constant parameter it doesn't varies much and certainly uh, g is also uh, non g is also non variable although it varies with the height but its effect is much more or less in comparison to this parameter so for a constant density fluid as it has been stated over here we can say that the gauge pressure or the change in pressure is basically directly proportional to your vertical height but there are the cases where rho and g can also change so generally the effect of density variation and acceleration variation is small as i have told you but uh, for the larger depth where wherein you know uh, wherein we have a very larger depth so in that case uh, if we have the liquids what happens in that case the above layers create some uh, pressure on the lower layers due to which the density at the lower part increases due to which what happens 
due to which what happens there is there is also a change in the density so that change increase in the density also contributes to the change in this particular pressure so in the the pressure variation is also larger in that cases because the density is no more constant in that case it is certainly more when you increase the depth of the fluids rather it is more dominant in case of your liquids but in case of gases the density is generally less and the pressure is not exerted or uh, uh, by the topmost layers to the bottommost layers so in 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 case of a uh, uh, pressure variation uh, in a, you know in a, in a room you can say the pressure in variation in a room is negligible because the density change is also negligible in that case because the gases are gen generally lighter than your liquids So coming towards the application areas, uh, what we have discussed mainly about the Pascal's law. Since we know that the pressure along the horizontal plane is constant for the fluids which have the same density, therefore what we can do, we can try, we can find out the application areas of this uh, Pascal's law. We have a case wherein uh, we want to move this, uh, lift this box, and we are applying some force F2 on this side and if we have this kind of area which is certainly less over here and it is more over here so we have a fluid which is uh, filled in that uh, cylinder so what we will get so uh, certainly the pressure will be same at this level as per your uh, fluid statics concept so p1 is equals to p2 and it can be written as f1 by a1 equals to f2 by a2 and if we want to find out the force f2 and that will be given by this relation so if we if we uh, consider that area A1 is four times the area A2, which is certainly over here, so that force will be 0.25 times F1. So the force which will be required to lift this box, because it will the the box will have some weight and it can be regarded as a force which is in the round direction. So equal opposite force will be required to lift this one. So certainly the force which will be required to lift this one. Uh, will be 0.25 times the force or the weight of basically uh, this particular box so this force which we have to apply over here is F2 okay so by using this kind of arrangement it's, it is basically the principle of a hydraulic check by using this kind of a principle uh, the reduction in the force required to lift the box can be obtain therefore the effort required to lift the box is reduced by 0.25 times the weight of the box by using the pascal's law and uh, this is basically the principle of your hydraulic jack so this 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 was first of all observed by pascal and therefore it it, it is known as the pascal's application of the pascal's law so uh, this law also finds application in different devices such as your hydraulic lifts hydraulic brakes hydraulic presses and there are other uh, other uh, application areas of this Pascal's law are there. So uh, this was regarding your application areas of the Pascal's law. And uh, one more important point is that in case of your fluid mechanics, uh, fluid statics concept, the pressure is independent of the cross-sectional area of the container. So it has nothing to do with the cross-sectional area of the container. So uh, these were the books which were considered uh, or referred during the course of action. So I thank you very much for watching this video. In this video we covered the uh, body forces, surface forces, Pascal's law, hydrostatics law and some application areas of your Pascal's law. So in the next video uh, we will be proceeding with the next part of your uh, fluid statics. So till then I take your leave. Thank you very much.